uh, Lauren Bisset work and Morgan mm -hmm. Stanley right here on the right. This building is typical of the new Times Square. It is a financial institution, nothing to do with show business. Here on the left, this small little building, TKTS, this is where they sell half-price tickets to Broadway shows on the day of performance only to unsold seats. So you take your chance, what might be available, but you do save money. Uh, coming up here on the right, on the second floor here, this is where the MTV television studios are. MTV may mean nothing to you, but if you ask your uh, younger children and your grandchildren, they will know a lot about it. There is an afternoon show uh, that emanates from these studios okay. here, and kids come out here yeah. on the streets. Yeah. Right there is and good. good morning, America. Try to be seen. Oh, yeah. See the Here on the left, there? the brand new Good Morning America show, uh, uh, brand new Good Morning American studio. It just opened two weeks ago. There on the left, right here in Times Square, as if Times Square needed more activity. Yeah. The building just beyond it is the brand new Condé Nast building with the ESPN zone in the base of it. Soon the largest sign in the world will be put up there, eight stories tall, all digitalized, advertising NASDAQ, the over-the-counter market. It will open on New Year's Eve. The building right here with a news ticker coming around it and the Budweiser sign and the TV screen, this is where the ball falls on New Year's Eve. All this area is closed off, open only to pedestrians. This New Year's Eve, there will be a parade starting at 7 o'clock in the morning, every hour on the hour, celebrating New Year's, the parade in the culture of the country that is celebrating New Year's at that time, starting with Fiji. Here on the right, Reuters is building a new office tower, and if you look to the right down 42nd Street here, you will see where the Lion King is playing, the most popular ticket currently in New York City, in the restored 1903 New Amsterdam Theater. This theater was the home of the Ziegfeld Follies for many, many years. Here we are heading down into the into the uh, Garment District, once we cross 42nd Street, and this is where the famous showrooms are for all the celebrated designers and manufacturers. This is where their offices are. This is where their studios are and where their showrooms are. This is also where you can get great deals on what are known as showroom sales. There's a publication that lists them. They occur almost every single day. And you can get designer items at a fraction of their cost. However, you do have to know where to go because none of them are officially advertised, only in this special publication or by word of mouth. Here on the right, the Parsons School of Design, a division of the new school, specializing in training people for the uh, disciplines found here at the, in the Garment Center. And there is another school farther down, the world-famous Fashion Institute of Technology, a division of the State University of New York at 28th Street and 7th Avenue. Coming up here on the left, the Garment Center Information Booth. It's in the scaffolding, but it's easy to see. A giant needle and a button. And the counter in the, in the studio, in the information booth, is the top of a spool of thread. A giant spool of thread. In the heart of the Garment District is the world's largest store, Macy's. It runs from 6th Avenue to 7th Avenue from 34th to 35th Street. Did you all see the movie Titanic? Mm -hmm. Do you remember at the end of the movie, there was an old couple lying in bed, uh, hugging each other as the water came up around them? Yep. That was Isidore and Ida Strauss, the owners of Macy's Department Store, who died in the Titanic disaster. Hmm. Uh, they found Ida, they never found Isidore, and I'll tell you a little bit about their real life story in just a minute. So coming up here on the left, Macy's Department Store, uh, Macy's actually has as part of its employees, a pack of dogs. They live on the roof, and every evening they are set free in the store to locate people who are trying to spend the night. Oh, oh really? Here on the left, above the first story and the second story, 92 days left until the millennium. That is a countdown clock. Coming up here on the right, down the street here, that round building, we're going to turn right down here at 31st Street. That round building is Madison Square Garden. 
Uh, here to the left, the Hotel Pennsylvania. This is not the official Hotel Pennsylvania. The original, uh, that is the Statler. The original hotel was down here, the Southgate Tower. However, the Statler now calls itself the Hotel Pennsylvania, and who knows what its telephone number is. That's right, Pennsylvania 65000. Glenn Miller used to perform here in the Southgate Tower in the ballroom roof, and he used to broadcast from there, and one of the tunes that he made famous was Pennsylvania 65000. Uh, all the people that you see here, this is where Pennsylvania Station used to be. Uh, the, oh, this is interesting. We're turning, we're turning right here on 31st Street, and it says Joe Louis Plaza. Well, it's very interesting that this is Joe Louis Plaza because Madison Square Garden is down here. Pennsylvania Station used to be here. It was torn down to make way for the new Madison Square Garden. The original Madison Square Garden we will see in just a minute. It is right it was right next to where your hotel is. Um, and that is where Joe Lewis actually fought, up at 50th Street, not down here. When Penn Station was torn down, the station is actually still here in terms of function. It is underground, under this office tower and under Madison Square Garden. It is the largest commuter railway station in the entire world, and by far the busiest. It handles the commuter trains and long distance trains for all of New York City, all the long distance trains for New York City, the commuter trains from New Jersey and Long Island. Every single business day, 500,000 commuters come into the station underneath these two buildings. It is way too small. It's basically like a giant uh, subway station. We're going to turn right here. Yes, the streets for the most part are one way. Uh, the odd-numbered streets run west, directly in front of us, in the clearing sky that I so happily arranged for you after cleaning the streets while you slept at night. Thank you. Uh, yes, got the bus washed and everything. That is New Jersey. It's rare that something clean comes from New Jersey. <laughs> there used to be a sign when you went across the George Washington Bridge uh, when all the, uh, the refineries were working back in the 50s and the 60s and uh, a lot of the garbage dumps and things like that and it said, Welcome to New Jersey. There's a smell of success in the air. <laughs> I don't know if people would call that success, but there was definitely a smell. New Jersey is also home of what people refer to as B-52 mosquitoes, the largest mosquitoes in the wetlands just the other side of the river. So here on the right, this is Madison Square Garden. Yes, you will notice that with New York's inimitable logic, it is round. Now, I told you that Penn Station actually is way too small. Here on the left, this is the main post office for New York City. The zip code here is 10001. It is open 24 hours a day, every single day of the year. It was designed by Stanford White, the, uh, the same person who designed the old Penn Station. And it is not used as much as it used to be. It was built by the railroad station because the railroads used to be the great long distance mail carriers. There were always major, major uh, post offices built near it's the train stations. Us. They are going to convert that post office into Pennsylvania Station since the railroad tracks run right underneath us, right into Pennsylvania Station and the railroad yards beyond. Uh, here in New York City you will see many signs, people doing many different things. Uh, you will see a sign, don't block the box, fine plus two points. That means if you try to jump the light and you get caught in the intersection, you can get fined and you can get two points against your license. The low score wins, not the high score. The high score, you're liable to lose your license. Our signs, our traffic lights, and many of our laws are meant as suggestions. <laughs> Among the laws that we have, we have some real knee slappers. We have no double parking. Yeah. <laughs> we have no horn blowing. 
Yeah. Now, actually, when you consider the amount of traffic, I think that law is pretty well observed. I always feel that the people who blow their horns are either people who are from out of town <laughs> or people who haven't taken their medication. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also have no jaywalking. I think if you asked most New Yorkers if they knew there was a law against jaywalking, <laughs> They would look at you like you suddenly said something in a foreign language. I don't think it even occurs to them that there's such a law. I must confess, I myself have been known on occasion to jaywalk. I don't think any New Yorker thinks twice about it. You cross where and when you can. I have never, ever, in my 30 years of living in New York, ever heard of anybody getting a jaywalking ticket. Our mayor made a noise about trying to enforce it at one time, but uh, it was one of those things that immediately faded away. I believe our mayor on occasion may even have you-know-what. Uh, New York City is composed of five sections, or boroughs. The borough that you're on now, once again, is the island of Manhattan. The East River, over to our right, the Hudson, the only true river, over to our left, going all the way, almost all the, all the way up to Lake Champlain. Um, the harbor behind us, and in front of us, the Harlem River at the northern end of the island, up in Washington Heights. Once again, if you think of the bow of the island as the financial district and the stern, way up where the George Washington Bridge is, here you can see how very straight the grid pattern is. It's like a piece of graph paper. 8th Avenue straight in front of us. This is where we were a few minutes ago. The column plopped down there in the middle of the road. Uh, running on the diagonal down the island is the old Indian path used by the northern Indians, the Algonquins and the Mohawks. Broadway. And where Broadway crosses one of these major north-south avenues, these are the famous squares. Times Square is where Broadway crosses 7th Avenue. Herald Square is where Broadway crosses 6th Avenue, Madison Square is where Broadway crosses 5th Avenue, and so on down and up. Um, the squares in New York, like Madison Square Garden, which is round, these famous city squares, as you could see from Times Square, are not squares at all. They're general areas, and because of Broadway going on the diagonal, cutting across the uh, main avenue, it makes virtually a set of triangles, a mirror image, bow tie set of triangles, so they're not really squares at all. On the island of Manhattan, the smallest borough, by the way, only 22 square miles, 13 and a half miles long, at its widest point, two and a half miles wide, but most places it's less than two miles wide, there are 1.6 million people who live here. However, during a business day such as today, there are over 3.2 million people on this island. So every single day, over a million and a half people commute onto the island. They come by bus, by train, by subway, by plane, helicopter, by ferry boat. There's a very active ferry boat business. Um, here on the left, the largest bus terminal in the world, running two blocks from 40th to 42nd Street and from 8th to 9th Avenues, the Port Authority bus terminal. This bus terminal handles 350,000 commuters every single day. It is three stories above and two store and one story down below underneath the main level. Bus is way up on top. Yeah, you can see buses and the ramps up top. Uh, there, actually, this is a wonderfully designed building. It has ramps in the rear that connect directly with the Lincoln Tunnel leading over to New Jersey so that the bus transportation does not come directly onto the streets of New York and interfere with the regular traffic. Here on the right, this is referred to as the new Times Square, the new 42nd Street. You have a brand new hotel, a, a group of buildings that, where they're going to house 26 movie theaters, a Madame Tussauds wax museum across the street, new restaurants, 13 movie theaters, soon to be a new hotel built here as well. The first major new construction on 42nd Street in 100 years. Here to the right, you have the major streets with the Broadway shows. You will see Phantom of the Opera coming up just down here. On the right, and many other theaters. Sardi's is also on that block. And we're going to make a right turn on 50th Street this time. Oh, there's a... 
44th, 45th, and 46th streets here over to the right are the prime blocks for Broadway shows. However, there are Broadway theaters in this area all the way up to 55th Street. That's not our, where we stayed, that's not our... Nope, that One block fair. over here to the left is 9th Avenue. 9th Avenue is a residential district. And 9th Avenue, for those of you, since you're going to be eating on your own tonight, that want to go the one block that direction to have dinner, um, there are wonderful small family-owned restaurants all along 9th Avenue that you might enjoy. Uh, your hotel's at 51st Street, if, er, between 51st and 52nd. If you go around the corner of 51st Street, there are a string of four French restaurants uh, that are very, very good, very nice, all clustered together there. An Irish pub across the street. Okay, that one we know. Um, and if you go over to 9th Avenue, you'll see there's a very good Greek restaurant over there called Uncle Nick's that's very good. Here in the Times Square area, a little nearer your theater too, if you just walk around, you'll find lots of wonderful restaurants. If you walk down to 46th Street on 8th Avenue, between 46th on 46th Street between 8th and 9th, it's known as Restaurant Row. There are 21 restaurants. That's nearer your theater. So here to the left, this is where the old Madison Square Garden was, where this office tower is. And here to the right, a brand new apartment house, and across the street next to your hotel, another apartment house. These are mostly studio and one-bedroom apartments. They, the studio, one-room apartment, about 600 square feet, Studios rent for $2,000 a month. Oh, oh, oh. These are meant to be shared apartments, corporate apartments, pied -a for well-to-do people, not long-term apartments. Uh, the building here on the left, once again, this is the Paramount Building. This is where uh, John Kennedy Jr. had his office, the headquarters of George Magazine. And here last night, they resurfaced half the street. I guess the rain put out the other half. They were doing it this morning on 42nd. They were paving this morning on 42nd. Yeah, it's not the same thing. It's important. It's important to remember the difference between the streets and the avenues because the streets run across town and the avenues run north and south. And 8th Avenue runs north and south. And 8th Street is way down in Greenwich Village. And you're going to end up in an entirely different part of town if you're not careful. <laughs> Rockefeller Plaza is actually this private street that runs through Rockefeller Center. Uh, Rockefeller Center is one of the great architectural successes of the world. When, Rockef when the Rockefeller hired architects designed it, normally the tall buildings are put on Fifth Avenue, but it was designed during the Depression in order to widen the base of people who would be here. They put smaller buildings on Fifth Avenue, put this private street in, and put the larger buildings back here. The larger buildings actually have Fifth Avenue addresses, but they are not on Fifth Avenue. It creates a lot of open space, and the international buildings here in front of us uh, drew the international clients at the beginning of the century, at the beginning of the Depression. Here on the right, they're putting in the new ice skating rink. In the summertime, it's an outdoor cafe. And here we're going to turn right. As we turn, you will notice to the left the 11th largest cathedral in the world, the seat of the Catholic Archdiocese of New York, St. Patrick's Cathedral. We're going to be getting out in just a few minutes for a little bit of a walk around Rockefeller Center. St. Patrick's Cathedral was started in 1859, just before the Civil War. The main sanctuary was opened in 1879, and the cathedral itself was finally completed in 1903 costing twice as much as they expected and taking four times as long. It's the headquarters for the Catholic Archdiocese of New York, headed by John Cardinal O'Connor. It is vaguely modeled after Cologne Cathedral, although it has flying buttresses, looks like flying buttresses there on the sides. Actually, it is made of mortar and stone. Uh, the buttresses are not actually functional. We didn't have 
stonemasons that could do that in the, in the 1850s. Wall Street. Now it's 
famous around the world. What does Wall Street say about this? Matt, At the, top, the building with the gold figure on top, that wedding cake building, is the municipal building. And that happens to be a statue of civic virtue up there. There it is, the power of the wool. South Shore Square. Shell's favorite. This building on the right that says Watchtower is the headquarters for the Jehovah's Witnesses, and they give you the time and the temperature. But could we have it in Fahrenheit, please? We don't speak Celsius here. 72 degrees Okay, Fahrenheit. here's the Brooklyn Bridge. Nice mild day. Yeah. This is the Brooklyn Bridge, everybody. It opened in 1883. It was designed by a German immigrant, John Roebling. He died. His son, Washington Roebling, became the chief engineer. 1883. The towers were the highest things in all of Manhattan when that bridge opened. Folks, you can still buy stock in it if you like. You give me your money, I'll give you a stock certificate. Some kind of dry cargo. They keep the boat in very good condition. Well painted. See where she's from. A little round building with the pointed rooftop. That's where they inter President Ulysses Simpson Grant. Sam Grant, they called him all his life. He was not a New Yorker, but he spent his last years here. Also interred there is Julia Grant, Mrs. Grant. The church is Riverside Church. It is a Protestant church, and in that tower are 74 bells that go to Carillon. We missed And directly missed inland bells. and running south, the campus of Columbia University. Now look at the traffic heading north, folks. It's beginning to slow down as we're getting into the so-called rush hour. Oh, yeah. Fascinating. You go to school, and it's and a lot of them have to learn English, you know, they don't speak English. That's a difficult job for the public school teachers, you know, to teach the kids at the same time they want them to learn English. And the kids want to learn English, of course. For your income on rent than anywhere else in the country. Okay, thank you. Now, having said that, let me give you an example or two. If you were to move into a one-bedroom apartment tomorrow, here on the open market, you could be paying anywhere from $2,500 to $4,000 a month for a one-bedroom. There are buildings here in Manhattan now that are getting $4,000 for a one-bedroom. If you're talking about two and three bedrooms, boy, you're getting up the ladder to six, seven thousand a month. You go all the way up to 27000 a month for a penthouse, if you're interested. You say you want to buy an apartment, okay? Let's put it in proportion. If you go out into the countryside, 
you can buy an, an estate with a mansion, swimming pools, tennis, you know, all of that, two or three million. There are flats here in Manhattan that go for nine million, 10 million, 14 million. Flats that someone said would flatten the Taj Mahal. Can you believe that? People pay that for them. Uh, Donald Trump lives in a 53 room apartment. Now, how can anybody live in 53 rooms? No wonder he got divorced. They probably couldn't find each other. Yeah. Marla, where are you? 